Hello friends, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Sanam. This is Perfectly Imperfect Keto, where being perfect is overrated and being imperfect is appreciated. And if this is the first time you are seeing my face, I hope the content that you find here encourages you to like and subscribe. I would love to have you along for my journey and I would love to follow along in your journey as well. So go ahead and drop me a comment and let me know if you are new here and tell me a little bit about yourself. So my friends, I just literally got out of work literally just eight minutes ago. So I'm still rocking my messy bun, which I definitely do not mind because as you all know, we are definitely friends here. I keep it real on my channel. So you're going to see the messy bun <laughs> and I definitely do not mind that. So I wanted to actually do this video to give you all just an update of this month of September, as well as what my plans are going forward. So as you all know, and I'm just kind of looking at some bullet point notes that I made. That way I kind of don't leave any information out. But as you all know, I speak from the heart. I speak unscripted. I just want to make sure I'm covering each point that I wanted to mention here. So this month of September, as you all know, I have done dairy free. Not because I had any adverse side effects necessarily from a dairy, but I had stayed away from dairy starting January 1st of this year and reincorporated back four months into my carnivore journey. So it was the month of May that I started to add dairy back and certain dairy, in particular cow's milk dairy, does not taste the same to me anymore. I can certainly feel the texture and the creaminess as I'm eating it, but I'm definitely having cheese, but the taste is no longer there. And I've experimented with different type of cow milk cheeses, such as cheddar, uh, Monterey, Colby Jack, uh, yellow cheddar, white cheddar, um, basically a lot of different types in the cheddar family I've tried. Um, there's just so many different variety that I have tried. Um, if any of you have a Costco available or an Aldi, you best believe when I go to those stores, I tried practically all the cheese selections that they had available. But what I've come to notice is just the cheeses made with either goat's milk or with sheep's milk, those I can still taste. Um, so that definitely is telling um, that I really should not be uh, it's kind of allowed me to have just another kind of epiphany with my mental health. I should not be having those cheeses if I cannot truly taste them. So I kind of had to do a reset on my mindset is basically what my focus was. As you all know, I don't do anything from a challenge perspective. I try to focus my journey on the mental healing, the healing period is what I should basically say. So I try to have my mindset focused on the healing and what is going to continue my path of reaching my better health goals. Um, so I do not need to be having those cheeses because it's just for me. It was just the fact of mentally just seeing a burger patty as a cheeseburger with a slice of cheddar cheese. But if it's not having any taste, I can definitely eliminate it. So that's what I did was reset for this month of September. I have just simply three days left. Uh, so today is Thursday, September 28th. So I'm down to only three days remaining. I have been able to do really well have not had any cheats with incorporating any cheeses or any dairy at all. I've most definitely kept away from dairy completely. So it's really gone really well. So I really feel when come October, if I do end up reintroducing with just the sheeps or the goat's milk cheeses, I feel like I will be happy with that and I'll be able to do very well with it as well. So, the next thing that I wanted to mention was my plans for the month of October. So for the month of October, another one of the goals that I had for my better health journey 
is to have a better relationship with intermittent fasting. So I wanted to start off slow. So I did end up just starting January 1st of this year with my carnivore journey with triple B and E. So that would have been beef, butter, bacon, and egg. As some of you already know from my content, I am allergic to piggy, myself as well as my children. So I stayed away from bacon. So other than that, I simply just had the double B and the E for eggs. Um, part of my minus <laughs> the triple B um, challenge. Um, I also, I did not do that from a challenge perspective. For me, it was important to go 30 days. I was very successful with the 30 days. I felt so amazing. I healed so many different things that I was having ailments from, so such as limited mobility, um, so if you've watched any of my videos about my journey, I had limited mobility to the point that I was in so much pain from heel spurs that I could not really go out anywhere because if I did go out anywhere, I was limping or I was having to use one of the motorized scooter type of carts in the grocery store, um, which our grocery stores can get very busy here. And we do have a lot of elderly population that ends up using those motorized carts. So a lot of times there would not even be a motorized cart available because they're already taken. Um, so it just became a real just nuisance. Um, I also dealt with irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. So all these different things, all these different pains and everything, thankfully they have completely gone away just being consistent with just a carnivore way of eating. And I am just so surprised that I will almost be reaching nine months being carnivore starting October 1st. So that for me is just completely hooch right there. Um, so with my eating, I originally started off just eating until comfortably stuffed. That is generally the way that Dr. Barry also advocates for everyone to stay off of the standard American diet foods is because you are able to simply eat until you are comfortably stuffed because if you comfortably stuff yourself with all the meaty fatty goodness, best believe you are not going to have any appetite for anything, not even the meat. You are simply not going to feel any sort of desire or any sort of cravings, especially if your mental health is healed. So that is the other thing as well. Thankfully, I have not gone off plan with my carnivore way of eating. I have not had what is called as slip ups in the community. And I think it's really important for people to address the difference. So there is a difference. So say for example, if you have a special occasion and it is something that you pre-planned in advance that you are going to go off plan with something. Um, so let's say for like example, if you decided that you were gonna go off plan from your carnivore, your keto, keto -vore way of eating, and you decided, you know what, I'm going to have a really small slice of cake for my birthday. And you decided to have that cake and you basically just had that. You made the decision of having just that one slice and next day things continued on with whatever your way of eating is, carnivore, ketovore, keto, and that was that. So you basically pre-planned, you went in with a plan, you had that slice of cake, and everything went back to normal with your proper human diet. That is very different than some off-plan, some slip-ups that are repetitive. When you have something that's repetitive, and I'm only saying this because I'm able to possibly identify things a little bit more easily because I was someone that did suffer from food addiction. And I also succumb to these foods to fill certain voids. 
to fill emotional voids, to fill mental voids, to fill voids of boredom. So I had these different types of addiction with my connection with food. So don't feel bad if you need to seek professional help because you feel like you really truly are not able to stay on plan, that you are repetitively coming off plan, you're repetitively having these slip ups, you might have to try to get professional help because once you get your mind right, my friends, it becomes just so effortless. I am truly speaking from experience. It is not about perfection that I've been able to stay on plan. It is simply because I got the help I needed prior to going into this way of eating. And that is what continues to allow me to continue forward with the right mindset. So I wanted to be able to certainly address that. Um, but as far as having that important game plan, I made sure that I made a proper game plan for myself. So because I have gotten so comfortable with initially starting off being comfortably stuffed, then I went down to just two mad, which is two meals a day. And then as of recent, I have been consistent with OMAD, which is one meal a day. So because I'm already generally fasting, anywhere from about like 23 to 24 hours by the time I have my meal to break for one meal a day, I still yet, I feel like my body still yet could go a little bit longer. So I am going to be experimenting. You might have heard in this community, there is such a thing as N equals one experimenting, where you simply just make up what your hypothesis is about yourself and you test it out, see how it works. Did it work for you? Were you able to achieve better health goals with it? Or did you have any hindrances or any irritations? So that is what I've been doing very much part of my journey. I do not like to follow any trends, any challenges. I just do what is best for me and what is best for my body and as well as my mentality. So I made the plan, I have done it before. So it is referred to as ADF and it is an intermittent fasting style where you can either fast for 36 hours or you can fast up to 48 hours. So simply what it is, is alternate day fasting of you fast one day and you are basically eating or as called in the community, feasting another day. So it's basically alternating day by day, fasting, feasting, fasting, feasting. So there are some that set particular days within the week as far as their dedicated days of when they will fast and feast. But for me, it's just easier just to alternate day by day. So that is what my plans are going to be, as well as starting off with the minimum of the 36 hours of fasting. So I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to most definitely keep with carnivore. And I'm also thinking of incorporating possibly two meals is what I'm going to try to do. Uh, only because once I break my fast, I want to be able to have some sort of bone broth, you know, something small, possibly like one or two boiled eggs, just to kind of wake up my metabolism before I go in with my actual meal um, to truly break my fast. So that is going to be my plans as far as when it comes to the alternate day fasting, as well as when it comes to the amount of hours that I'm going to do. Also, I made sure to plan in advance. So as I'm telling you all, you have to really truly make sure that you have a game plan. So I've already printed up some calendars and I actually have a calendar for October. And I also did November as well as December. I already plotted out what my fast and what my feast days are going to be. 
for me, I felt like I would be able to be more consistent if I made sure any important days possibly coming up that they did possibly end up being my days of eating, my feasting days. So we do have some time that we're going to go away for the weekend at the end of the month of October. So it's going to be our oldest son's 15th birthday. So thankfully for that Saturday that we're going to be away. So we're going to be leaving from a Friday night. So that Friday night is going to be October 27th. I will be fasting that day and that is totally fine by me because I will still be working that day. By the time we leave in the evening, we'll be simply leaving to arrive at a hotel that is two hours away. So we're going to deal with a two hour drive. By the time I get there, after working all day, I'm literally just going to want to shower and sleep. So I am not going to be concerned about that first day of our travel being a fast day. Luckily, that Saturday, October 28th, that will be my eating day. So that will actually be wonderful because that will be the actual full day that we'll have as a vacation day. And then come that Sunday, which is October 29th, we will be traveling back home. So if anything, there is breakfast that is available at the hotel. And I really, I'm not going to have a big desire because the only things that I was ever able to eat at a hotel the last time we traveled when we were keto was the boiled eggs. I can definitely be fine with missing out on something as simple as just some boiled eggs. So that is totally fine with me to be missing that breakfast before we take the drive back home. So I definitely made sure that got planned out really well. And then going forward, so if this goes really well for October, if I do make the decision, I also went ahead and plotted out for November. So November puts me at eating for actual Thanksgiving day, which works out perfect. And then if I was to go on further, I will also be having an eat day be on my actual birthday, which I am really excited about because we will be going for the very first time to a Brazilian steakhouse. So I'm super excited. So that also got planned out really well, as well as Christmas day will end up being an eating day as well. So as you can see, just from me mentioning these different dates, I made sure to plot and pre-plan in advance to make sure that the dates were dates that were going to work for me. It was dates that I am able to feel like I am still on plan with what my family is doing. And it for me is basically major celebrations that I don't really want to just be sitting there at a restaurant on my son's birthday. Could I? Yeah, I could absolutely be sitting there. But I would love to partake in having like a steak and some shrimp on the side. You know, I would love to be able to partake in truly celebrating. I know we are not supposed to connect and still have an association with food and celebrations. But still yet, I just, I don't want to be just sitting there. I rather partake because obviously I'm still going to be keeping to plan of eating carnivores. So if I could at least do that much, I don't want to be too difficult or too hard on myself by completely missing out on his special occasion. So that is basically all I had to cover with you all. So that would be the plans going forward for October. And I will certainly update you all of how my carnivore with the alternate day fasting, intermittent fasting incorporation goes. And I did want to ask because I will simply just be possibly having uh, possibly two meals. So let me know. If that is content that you all would want to see, I have done before my what I eat in a day, but if you would like to see the meals that I'm incorporating when it comes to my alternate day fasting, and I can also insert 
after, you know, say like a week's worth of my eats and my fasting incorporation, I can also incorporate just some little comments and some feedback about how I'm doing and how I'm feeling. So if that is something you want to see as I'm going through this for the month of October, definitely let me know because it will absolutely keep me on track for the content you all would be interested in seeing going forward. But as always, my friends, I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all. Take care, my friends. Thank you.